fill us in, if you would, on the basic notions of consciousness as you understand them. And consciousness seems to have a lot of meanings to a lot of people. How do you see it? How do you study it? What's your theory about it? Yeah, the first thing that happens with consciousness is that people understand all kinds of different things. So it's good to clean up the act a little bit and say at least what scientists are beginning to study now. So let me use a couple of slides here. One important thing, let me define it first with this, actually. That's the definition we all to keep in mind all the time. I call it what goes away when you fall into dreamless sleep. Dreamless sleep, sleep. yes. So, you know, that time early in the night that if I wake you up yeah. and ask you, tell me everything that was going through your mind a moment ago before I woke you up, you have nothing to say. You say, I wasn't there, the world wasn't there, my friends weren't there, there was nothing at all. Mm -hmm. It's the closest thing we know to death. In fact, the only other thing like it is general anesthesia. The thing is, I, consciousness is best defined in the negative, very much like God. You say all the kind of things that it is not yeah. in order to understand what consciousness but is. So let put, me say that. If yes. you put somebody in a, um, an MRI while they were not going through a conscious state, would there be activity going on when they're in the deep sleep? Yes, there would be plenty of activity. In uh -huh. fact, I can show you that. That's one of the mysteries, indeed. Your brain can be just as active when you're gone early in sleep as when you are present, like now. But, and but yet, the experience of consciousness you are gone. Is, a, is the difference. Huh? Yes, the experience, is, that's the difference. And, you know, I, the important thing to keep in mind, then, is that consciousness is, is not just what many people think of as self-consciousness, the ability to reflect upon yourself, agonizing about existential choices, wondering about the human condition, all of that, you know, like in that slide, is true, is an important part of consciousness. But consciousness is also just having any experience, like, you know, a rich sensory experience like that, without even wondering what it is. And the one I like the most, you know, maybe that's a sad part, the curse of consciousness for me personally, is pure darkness. If for a moment you just experience pure darkness, as if they turn the lights off now, and for a moment there is just nothing, silence and darkness, that's an experience too. And it is just as difficult to explain that anybody could have that experience, that there is something it is like to be you feeling dark mm. as anything else, as the complicated scene or the reflection that you might have about your destiny. So that's important. And one last thing I want to say in terms of definitions with this painting by Rousseau is that uh, the greatest experiment of all neuroscience in my mind is the one we do every night. When we fall asleep, and first we lose consciousness, and then at some point we dream. And when we dream, we have proof, undeniable proof, that the brain alone, the brain by itself, disconnected from the outside world, both in the input side and on the output side, is able to generate an entire universe of consciousness. In fact, it makes up the world all by itself every night. Mm. That is perhaps something to keep in mind. Consciousness is there whether the world is there or not. Mm. Mm.